Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews. I'm Judith and you're watching another episode of Overbooked, the series where I review every single book on my channel because I'm a dragon rider and I don't care what you think. Today we are delving into a series with which I have a somewhat complicated relationship. Uh, I don't know how this review is going to go. I'm going to try and stick to my usual structure as much as possible. Bear with me if it gets a little bit waffly. But yes, title thumbnail. We're talking about The Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Paolini. Quick disclaimers before we start. I'm going to be speaking from my personal perspective a little bit more than usual. Usually I try and talk about like why you might like the book, why a person might like the book. I'm very much talking about my personal experience with this series today. Please try and bear that in mind. I'm going to keep this as spoiler free as humanly possible. I might dip into some elements of the book because there are some particular things I want to talk about. But for the most part, I'm not going to ruin this series for you. I'll link the story graph for book one in case you want to check out any user generated content warnings. And lastly, I bought all of these books myself and no one is paying me to talk about books. All opinions are my own. The story of my journey with the inheritance cycle begins in a bookshop back in Hampshire. I honestly don't remember which one. I think it was probably a Waterstones. I don't think it really matters. And because my dad was a vicar, we used to get grants from basically the church that would like these really old grants that were designed for church the children of people who were in the church to get access to like educational things. And we kind of there was a loose definition around that because obviously in these days we get all of our stuff through school. So um, I think my guitar was bought through that because I learned the guitar. Um, I got a pair of ice skates because I was learning to ice skate educational. And one year my mum just took me and my brother to a bookshop and was like, go ham, take, take what you fancy. Within reason, we didn't go completely ham. If someone did that to me now, or I would leave with armfuls of books. But at the time, I think I took maybe 10, which at the t a lot of money. We had very little money at the time. Thank you. Very few things do I thank the church for, but my acquisition of many books during that, that time was was strong. Anyway, one of the books I picked up was a paperback copy, not this copy, of Aragon by Christopher Paolini. Had no idea that it was just dragon with an E, didn't process that until much later in life. A little bit embarrassed about it. But anyway, saw a dragon on the cover, thought it looked cool. I didn't read the book for many years, I think, probably about two or three years afterwards I finally picked it up. It took me a long time to get into, but since then it became a bit of a comfort series for me, uh, and I read all of them, I loved them, I bought them on release, I devoured them on release because a person I was dating at the time kept trying to spoil them for me and pretending that they'd read them before me and they hadn't trash person. And it's just been one of those series that I've really loved. I've listened to them on audiobook multiple times. I've read them multiple times. It's it's one of those things. It really stayed with me. And I think we're going to talk about it a bit more, but I think the la la large part of that is this is one of the first big fantasy series I ever read. What does this series actually consist of? There are four books. I haven't brought them all up because they are mostly downstairs and I just have to bring them up and downstairs a lot. I'll put the covers on screen for you. The first book, Aragon. The second book, Eldest. The third book, Brissinger. The fourth book, Inheritance. And uh, there is also an additional short story collection. It's three short stories uh, and some art. It is called The Fork, The Witch and The Worm and that came out in the, within the last couple of years. It was a big delay. Christopher Paolini has obviously also written To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. I have a review video up for that if you want to check that out. You can look him up if you want to. A big part of why this series got jetted into people's consciousness uh, was because he was so young when he published. His parents also are in publishing and uh, I don't want to make any allegations that I cannot support. But you know, you can think critically about that for yourself. Um, I also think that publishing has a tendency to like get really up in arms or like the media around publishing about young people getting book contracts uh, and 90% of the time you're like, okay, but they haven't really had that much time to develop their writing. So just think, just thoughts, thoughts that you can have about things and whether it's more marketing than anything else. I'm gonna pick up this a lovely hardback copy, which I actually bought very recently, knowing I was gonna be making this video. I saw it in a charity shop. Someone had donated pristine hardbacks of all of them. So I bought a copy of Aragon. The spine is a little bit off. I'm not fussed about it. It's much nicer than my paperback, which was covered in hair dye. Other reason I haven't brought the other ones up is that they've been well loved over the years. I don't have a single dust jacket for any of them except Inheritance. So um, bear with, bear with. One boy, one dragon, a world of adventure. When Aragon finds a polished blue stone in the forest, he thinks it is the lucky discovery of a poor farm boy. Perhaps it will buy his family meat for the winter. But when the stone brings a dragon hatch thing, Aragon soon realises he has stumbled upon a legacy nearly as old as the empire itself. Overnight, his simple life is shattered and he is thrust into the perilous new world of destiny, magic and power. With only an ancient sword and the advice of an old storyteller, for guidance, Aragon and the fledgling dragon must navigate the dangerous terrain and dark enemies of an empire ruled by a king whose evil knows no bounds. Can Aragon take up the mantle of the legendary dragon riders? The fate of the empire may rest in his hands. Dot dot dot. That's um, the basic plot of Aragon. Some people have also referred to it as Star Wars but with dragons, uh, Lord of the Rings but with dragons, generic fantasy novel with dragons. All of these somewhat fair, I would say. Uh, and if that makes you very, very angry um, as a person who loves this series, 
this is not the review video for you. My usual review structure is to talk about the pros before I talk about the cons, so I'm going to do that as always. This is a series that got me into fantasy. I can safely say that. I'd read some other things before. I read the Edge Chronicles when I was a kid, much more middle grade, but loved them. I was reading fantasy before this, but this is the first series I can remember really following on that wasn't redacted. Um, I bought the books when they came out. I loved them. I read them all not religiously, devouring them with a hunger that I hadn't really experienced with anything else before. And I think part of that's to do with there's a lot in this world. They are big books. There's a lot of like different cultures and ideas that are thrown in. There's a lot of familiar tropes, but if they're unfamiliar to you, they just feel new and exciting. Um, and the magic system was cool. I just liked the ideas behind it. I thought it was cool. And I was maybe 12. Uh, and I think that's something we need to acknowledge. <laughs> Don't judge 12 year old me for her choices. But I think a lot of people have this where they have a series that maybe has some problematic elements. Maybe they don't feel is as good now. Maybe they still absolutely love it, but they wouldn't recommend it to other people. That kind of series that really got you into fantasy. And I would love to know what that is for you. So comment that now. Pause this video, comment that, because I want to know what was your got you into it series for fantasy or sci-fi or whatever genre you love to read. So for me personally, that's a big selling point for this and I have a lot of nostalgia around it and I have a lot of, I can remember where I was when I read this and the moment that I realised it was actually four books and not three books and I was at the end of book three and I was like, how on earth are they going to resolve this? And I turned the page and it said, this will continue in inheritance and I nearly cried. I also think that as much as these are very, very big books with a lot of filler in them, there is a lot of stuff happening that maybe we didn't need as much of, perhaps, particularly in book one and potentially also in book four, maybe. I'm just suggesting. There are a lot of sequences in the series that I really love, particular scenes that I always come back to, where to the point where I will pick up the book, flick to that moment, and I will just read that bit, because for me, I really love it. There's a sword forging scene that I absolutely love. There's a wedding scene that I just find so enjoyable. There's uh, lots of other things. There are a lot of those particular moments within the story that have really stuck with me, and I think that's where Christopher Paolini's writing really shines, where the characters really shine. I love those moments. I don't know that it's worth reading all of the books all the time for those specific moments, but the, the high energy moments of this story and the high emotional moments are really worth reading and that's what I love about it. I don't think I've ever wanted to sit down and do a reread of the whole series. I think I did do it some time ago, possibly. Oh, it was um, when I was doing my rereads jar, I read a number of them, uh, but I didn't do like a back-to-back -back read. And I don't think I would want to do that. I would quite like to sit down and do a selective reread where I sit down with each of them and flick through to my favorite moments and just relive those. Perhaps I will do that at some point in the future. 12 year old me really felt like there were some cool characters. I really like the treatment of the Urgles, which are definitely just a rip off of the Orcs or any other kind of, you know, can foddery kind of creature that there exists in fantasy novels and um, but the treatment of them is very cool it's something that's been done in other books i now know that but at the time i was like wow how interesting to in book one have these characters who are just sort of there to be fought against and then to develop them and see what they're like and um i think that fork which worm actually does that even more i really love nasawada as a character again in hindsight some elements of that possibly not the best but to me at 12 this is a very cool person doing cool things. I want her to succeed. I like her a lot. And my last pro is that this really just managed to capture for me dragon riding in the best way that I had experienced it at that time. And that's sort of where I always come back to is that that idea of a bond with a dragon that you would get to fly on was just cool. How to Train Your Dragon is my favourite film. Less so sold on the book series, but it's my favourite film. Uh, I loved Temeraire, the particularly book one, because of getting the bond with the dragon. I just want a dragon friend. Please give me one. And this book let me experience that somewhat vicariously through Aragon. To the point where I used to... I'm, I'm exposing myself now. I have, like, a notebook that has tattoo ideas from when I was maybe... I think I must have been about 18. 17, 18. At the point where I could have almost got one. Okay, my first tattoo I got at 19, um, and they are in the ancient language, which is the magical language that you use to do magic in this series. There is a parallel universe where I have a an arrogant tattoo. We're here in this universe though, and it's okay. So then we come on to like the criticisms of the series and maybe some things I've realized as I've grown older and talked to more people about this series. It's really interesting talking to people for whom this wasn't their gateway into fantasy and what they feel about it, including the argument that it's just copying other things. And I think it is. Uh, I don't think I can dispute that. I'm not suggesting this is a unique and original story. I I think it is intended as a very familiar fantasy story. I think it got marketed as something very new and something bold and original. I don't, I don't think it is. Um, but that's what I like about it. That's the thing. Um, it has that familiarity. And I am a person, I watch the same films over and over again. I read the same books over and over again. If I didn't have a YouTube channel, I wouldn't buy new books. I would just read the stuff that's on my shelves forever. Um, I would only read a new book under great duress. Uh, I love the same music. I love all of the same stuff. So comfortable, familiar tropes to me 
just work. They are comforting to me and that's what this series really is. It's a comfort read for me. My other con that I had when I was reading the books and also now is that I don't love the romance. There's a romance between Aragon and an elf character who is much older than him. The age difference is not my problem with this. It's just that the book really wants it to happen and it feels like within the story the characters really don't. Uh, it's just Aragon being annoying uh, and you're kind of like I don't want this to pan out. You know there are some romances where you're like oh, it's not working right now but by the end of book four I'll be on board. I just never got on board with it. I always wanted it to go away. I always wanted there to be something else. And there are some lovely romantic stories within the work. So I know that it can be written. It feels like it was shoved in because it had to, because that was what the book was doing, because it was telling the story and it needed a romance in there. And I don't think it needed to be. To counter that somewhat, uh, I do think that the intention was to make Aragon seem like an annoying childish character so that he would have somewhere to go uh, and to grow. I don't necessarily think it 100% succeeded at giving you that growth. I think he just came across as annoying and young for a lot of the series. <laughs> and lastly, I kind of mentioned it, I think these are too big for no particular reason. There's a lot of stuff that I love about this and if you got me to sit down and actually work out which bits I would cut, I think I would have a hard time. But I think that's because we're talking to the girl who watched all of the Lord of the Rings extended editions and then what all the behind the scenes data. I wanted worlds, I wanted to absorb everything. And I actually think that like to be good books uh, that aren't for the person who just has all of the brain space and all of the escapism to just want to completely descend into a completely other world for thousands and thousands of pages. I think it would have been better had they perhaps cut the fat a little bit on these, perhaps. I normally end with comparisons, other things you might want to read before I get into final thoughts. Any fantasy book, <laughs> that's the thing. If you like a fantasy book, odds are this will have an element of it in there because it just does. It's very, very familiar. And that's kind of my final point is that this is just similar to a whole lot of other things. I mentioned Temeraire, you know, it's farm boy fantasy. If you've read one, you've read a lot of them. This is another example of that. In terms of like the familiarity of tropes and the overarching journey, Queen in Hiding really made me feel a lot of similar feelings that I felt when I read Inheritance for the first time. So I would check that review out if you're interested in that. Doesn't have dragons though, unfortunately, but does have talking to animals, which feels very similar in the things that I enjoy about it. So final thoughts, where do we stand on quote unquote generic fantasy? Where do we feel about it? Is it a case that it just depends when you read it? Like if I pick this up brand new now, would I still enjoy it for the same reasons that I enjoyed it when I was 12? Would I perhaps go, this isn't for me at all, I don't like this? I can't really know, short of hitting myself very hard on the head and hoping that I forget specifically the inheritance cycle until science develops a way to delete this from my brain and let me read it again I can't tell you and I kind of don't want to I like that nostalgia I like clinging to that uh, and as much as sometimes people will have very cool first books that got them into fantasy and I have to be like mine's the inheritance cycle guys just don't watch the film don't do it unless you want a really terrible time with a lot of wine have you read the inheritance cycle I'd love to know your experience with it whether you were recommended it by someone like me who was utterly obsessed in their teenage years and then kind of went oh no I'm judging this person's opinions or you love it, or you dislike it, or whatever your opinions are, I'd love to hear them down below. Lots of open space and very little judgment here down in the comments. While you're down there commenting, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated, and it lets you know when I post new videos and I have exciting stuff coming your way. You can also follow me on social media, come hang out on Discord where we have chill chats about books. Nothing makes me feel more loved and appreciated than my patrons over on Patreon who support the channel and get early access to videos and bonus content if you would like to join their number. That's linked below as well. Thank you so much for watching.